Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lauren coming in with Digital Nomad Lifestyle. Coming in today, pretty close to the Eiffel Tower here. Coming in today to talk about my attempt at celibacy. What was learned, how it went. Now, this is kind of eight months after everything. Um, as a recap, I started my journey with celibacy, I suppose. Like I'd say around like August or September of 2022. Right now, it is the end of July of 2023 so we're looking at nearly a year i was i tried to be celibate failed a lot of ways until i think beginning of december so i went uh my my attempt went from august to december august through november beginning of december 2022 sorry that's about three or four months of a shot which felt like a lot longer than three or four months to be fair so overall I failed in every way imaginable I'd say um, yeah I wasn't able to keep from sleeping with other women I didn't end up watching porn uh, failed a couple other ways so overall would I say like on paper you know would it be a success would, that, would this be a successful campaign uh, at first at first blush, no. No, it wouldn't. Right? Because it failed. That being said, I did outline four goals when I started. Four goals that I wanted to look back on when I was finished and see, okay, these I made slip and fall, but did I make some progress on these four goals? And these four goals for me is what's going to be important. If you're looking for how to be the perfect celibate individual, right? Um, I'm sure there's a bunch, I think there's a bunch of dudes across the internet, right? And dudes and women who have gone months and years uh, without having sex. So I'm not the guy that you want to go to. But if you're interested in hearing a little bit about my story and kind of what I took from it and how I'm transitioning from celibacy back to a life of normalcy and not living my life in a monastery or um, also as a single person, right? I'm single now. So um, how I transitioned back from the crash diet to a daily habit. To daily ha like to daily habits and more healthier, long, long-lasting, sustainable methods. I think this is for you, right? So, number one, find other ways to fulfill the needs I was fulfilling with sex. So, those needs essentially, after really outlining it, it came down to about three or four needs that I filled with sex and/or just like the compulsion for women's attention. One, comfort. Two, validation. Three, novelty. And for connection. So I have found more sustainable or like healthier ways to do it, right? One example of comfort uh, that I do, especially with traveling, right? Right now I'm obviously in Paris. I'm staying about three or four blocks from here. I'm going to be here for uh, altogether three months here in Europe. Then after that, going to Asia, right? So I don't have, so comfort is an important thing for me when you're traveling. Or I'm not even really traveling anymore. When you're just living abroad, uh, as long as I am, right? So, with comfort, one thing that I have a whole list of them, but one that really helps me a lot: keeping the house clean. I've noticed any, anywhere I'm living, if I keep it clean, that's nice. Really good smelling candles is another one, and another one is watching American TV, specifically The Office seems to be one, and like Disney movies. So if I watch uh, like American television, I try to watch it in foreign languages, but really if I watch it in English, it tends to give me like more, it's a more comforting feeling. Um, watching Office, watching Disney movies, Disney shows, stuff like that, that tends to give me a lot of comfort. While I don't, while it's not ideal for me to sit there after work and spend three or four hours watching The Office or Disney movies, particularly when I'm not watching in a foreign language and learning a foreign language. It is better than the alternative, right? So there's this idea that I, that I've outlined of, instead of this black and white of like, okay, I'm gonna to try to achieve comfort, right? So what's gonna be the most healthy way possible to achieve comfort, right? And what, what are the non-healthy ways to achieve comfort? I'm looking at it as more of a spectrum, right? So instead of like, if I don't, unless I, I'm cleaning the house every day and, you know, lighting a candle and doing these like really, really healthy, comforting things that are productive as well, then I might as well just be going back 
you know, trying to sip every good looking woman I possibly can. And that mindset is just, it's a, it's a lose mindset that I've noticed, that black and white idea of if I'm not celibate, if for an extreme example for me would be like, if I'm not celibate, I might as well go back to just screwing as many women as I possibly can that I find attractive, right? There's a middle ground between that. That's an example of that is <clears throat> TV shows, stuff like that. It's objectively, you could argue that it's a waste of time for sure, especially hours and hours of it. However, it's considerably better than going out and seeking comfort in some strange woman, right? Validation, um, biking is a big one for that one. So obviously going to the gym is another one as well. Positive affirmations to myself, or maybe not affirmations, but just speaking positively, being more mind, mindful of negative thoughts, particularly around like my body, uh, right, my face. I'm getting older, I'm gonna be 31 here pretty soon, when I'm getting the lines and stuff like that underneath my face. So just being careful about like how I talk to myself, being like, dude, you look so fucking old and shit that it drops my the way I feel about myself right and then I need to try to make up for that and it's usually external people that I'm going for right so a couple examples there build stronger future relationships this one still pretty bad at this one I wouldn't say that I I've gotten too much better than that I too much better I, I think that with celibacy I have found myself more committed to relationships because I'm not as like Oh, fuck it, I can just find someone else to sleep with. I, So it has helped a bit, but I would say I still have a very long way to go in this one. Number three, free up time. Uh, absolutely. I have so much more time now that I'm not compulsively on like dating apps and like chasing after women. Um, I do, I got it recently, unfortunately things ended recently with the relationship I was in. And I do have to say, transitioning out of that relationship, I do feel considerably more comfortable now being alone and being okay with like having faith that, you know, someday I'm sure I'll find a woman that's a good match, but I don't need to go out and like chase after women. And I feel much more comfortable with that than I have in the past, which is, which is quite nice. Number four, um, finding sustainable ways to outlive celibacy. So, and I would consider that a success for those three points that I mentioned earlier, right? I found more healthy ways to achieve the needs that I've achieved through sex. And I've also freed up more time. Post relationships, I don't feel as much of a compulsion, right? To be constantly sleeping with women. So I would say overall, while on the surface, I didn't succeed with celibacy. I would say like finding a sustainable lifestyle, I did. And I liken this, I liking this a lot to diets, right? So I'm not, I do kind of have a diet, but I'm not really super strict. Some people will ask me, hey dude, what do you do for your diet and blah, 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 like working out. And it's like, dude, I don't really have like a program or a regimen. Because for me, I find that it doesn't last very long. I do what like feels right to me, right? After like starting dieting when I was like 10 years old. And I view it kind of the same way with, this sort of like celibacy idea. It's like, I'm not gonna stick to like a hardcore diet for longer than a week, two weeks, maybe a month or two months if I'm really, really committed, right? And it's the same thing with celibacy or anything like that. For me, I'm not gonna stick to it. It's not a sustainable thing. So what I need to do is be able to exist in gray zones where, okay, let's try to get closer to what I feel is the best way to live. But even if I'm not totally achieving that, right? It's okay as long as I'm making progress and I'm not as compulsive as I was before and I'm more aware of my thoughts and actions. So coming out of it, I would say yes, more aware of my thoughts and actions. I did get closer to, to achieving sort of those intentions or goals that I had at the beginning. So I would consider it overall, I consider it somewhat of a success. Was it the greatest triumph of my life? Absolutely not. But I've had worse failures. Until next time, stay sexy.